Mass begins. A monthly Mass in the Vineyard will be held this Tuesday, June 4th at 7 p.m. at Atwater Estate Vineyards, Route 414 in Hector. All are welcome to attend. If you have never been to one of our monthly Masses in the Vineyard, we invite you to join us this Tuesday. If you have been, we invite you to return and bring someone with you. So this Tuesday at 7 p.m. at Atwater Estate Vineyards, Route 414 in Hector. The Mass Book for St. Mary's will open this Thursday at 9 a.m. in the parish office. There's other information in the bulletin. There's a bulletin insert on our legacy, our future, our hope. I ask you to please kindly pay uh, close attention to that uh, insert because there are some things we'll be doing in a few weeks. And our parish community congratulates all of our First Communion children who will be receiving the precious gift of the Eucharist for the first time today. May our Lord's tenderest blessing be upon each one of them and upon their families on this joyous occasion. There's a book of requests at the back of church to record your special intentions. We pray for these intentions daily. And here in the Schuyler Catholic community, we have a devotion at the end of Mass. At the conclusion of the recessional hymn, we kneel and silently pray three Hail Marys for the next one among us to be called home by God. We invite you to join us in that prayer this morning. And I ask you to kindly please make sure your cell phones are placed in a silent mode for the Mass. Our opening hymn is in the gathered hymnal number 844, Without Seeing You. Today's readings may be found on page 105 the Sunday's Word Missalettes of your pews. And I invite you now to join in our call to worship in.
peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather on this solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, we appeal to our Lord Jesus Christ for his healing, his mercy, and his peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God and Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, Scott, I was supposed to announce our first reading. Our first reading will be proclaimed by Melina.
proclaimed by Seamus. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, it is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he dies. The word of the Lord. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing of them, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And then the leftover fragments were picked up. They filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My father made his own homemade Italian sausage. He had a little room down in the basement with his, uh, his grinder and the stuffer. And, you know, he let me wash my hands really good and put the casings on the front for the, the link sausage. Or he'd teach me how to make the patties with my hands. And he loved to give it away. You know, he'd always, oh, I got some sausage. Let me get some for you. And then every December, He'd make a trip up to Savoia's pastry shop in Rochester to get the Italian cookies. And he'd make them little plates, and he just loved sharing those Italian cookies with people. 
or family members, neighbors, friends. No, just drop him off a little plate of Italian cookies as a way of, of sharing a part of his heritage, the food. Even though we were poor, I didn't know it at the time, I just thought the way I was. Even though we were poor, my mom was always giving away food, especially to kids. We'd play kickball in the backyard, and inevitably she'd call me in and say, here, I made some cookies, go bring them to the kids. Or she'd be scrounging, you know, something to give to the kids. Popcorn especially was a big one, because a little popcorn goes a long way and you pop it up. This is the feast of the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. This is the feast of Jesus in the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, Holy Communion. There's so many things I would like to share with you about Jesus and his body and blood. I mean, inside, I'm jumping up and down. I'm so excited about all these things, but you guys probably want to be home by dark, right? <laughs> I would love to spend time sharing with you about how Jesus is really present in the bread and wine. It's not just a symbol of his body and blood, it's not just a sign of his body and blood, but it's actually him. It is Jesus. The fact that the word Eucharist means Thanksgiving. Literal translation of that word Eucharist means Thanksgiving. And how when we come to Mass, that's a primary purpose, is that we offer God thanks for everything that we have received and are. And that the Eucharist, the bread and wine, is our offering God the Father a sacrifice of Jesus is our Thanksgiving. God, thank you for all that you have given us. We give you Jesus, your Son. How the Eucharist is healing. The body and blood of Jesus is healing. It's kind of interesting the gospel started out today with an account of healing. Jesus had been healing many people. That last prayer that we say before Holy Communion. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be Every Mass we say that, don't we? That Jesus can heal us, body, mind, and spirit. But with all the things to focus on for Eucharist, I think it was the words that Jesus says at his last supper. Today in our second reading, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, it's taken from a larger discourse about liturgy, about the early, the mass in the early church. And Paul is teaching about some of the things they're doing wrong and teaching them some of the things they should do. And in the midst of that, he recalls the words of Jesus at his last supper. And the words of Jesus, as Paul reports them, are most like the Gospel of Luke. Matthew and Mark kind of use the same set of words, but Luke and Paul kind of use the same set of words. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the people, saying, This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. This is me for you. Now, I was thinking that very possibly the church would have chosen the Last Supper account from St. Luke on this Sunday of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. We, use, we hear the words of Paul, so I was thinking, well, the Gospel of Luke would match it. But that's not the reading they chose. The reading they chose was about a miracle. A miracle of the feeding of thousands of people. Jesus has been teaching, he's been healing, he's been teaching. And the disciples come and they say, Jesus, the people are hungry. Dismiss them so they can go get some food. And what does Jesus say? Feed them yourselves. 
feed their hunger, take care of their needs. The disciples are like, Lord, are you crazy? You know, even if we could go buy enough food for all these thousands of people, where would we buy it? So Jesus said, what do you have? Five loaves, two fish. Give me what you have. Give me the little you have. And look what he does with it. He blesses it and breaks it. Ooh, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of foreshadowing his last supper. He blesses it, breaks it, starts passing it out. And first thing you know, thousands are fed with leftovers. This is me for you. This is me giving for you. I have to be honest. I don't know why I'm a priest. I really don't. I mean, in terms of, you know, God, why did you choose me? You know, there's so many other people out there that are holier and smarter. Sometimes I wonder if God knows why he chose me. I don't know. Um, but when I stand behind that altar and I say the words of Jesus, take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. This is my blood which will be poured out for you. I know. I know that it's not just saying those words, coming down here and saying, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. I know it's not just that. It's Italian sausage and Italian cookies. It's popcorn and it's cookies. It's taking what you have and giving and being for people in the world. Now, I believe that Jesus is truly present in the bread and wine. I believe that with all my heart. But we can be, I want you to hear this carefully. We have to be careful about over-pietizing our relationship with the Eucharist. Let me say that again. We have to be careful about over-pietizing our relationship with we come to Mass, we receive the Eucharist. This is Jesus on my hand, on my tongue, down inside me. Yes, I believe that. It's important. We stop in church during the week for five or ten minutes of prayer, knowing that Jesus is in the tabernacle, to just have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. Yes, I do that. First Fridays, we expose the Blessed Sacrament. We have exposition. Yes, we come and we adore Jesus in the Eucharist. I believe that. That's important. But if it stays within this church, that we come and, and Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, is all about what happens in this church, and it stops there. We have done an injustice to Jesus and to ourselves. Because we have to take what we receive here and bring it out there. When you receive Jesus in the Eucharist and you say, Amen, you're saying, I agree, this is Jesus. And now we're promising that we're going to become whom we receive. We're going to become more like Jesus. Which means that we go out into the world and we say, this is me for you. Now I had the great privilege of being at a rehearsal yesterday with all of our young people that are receiving their first hope. I'm so excited for you guys. I really am. I think this is so neat that you guys are doing this. If I didn't know better, I'd start jumping up and down. I'm so excited. But like I told you yesterday, I'm a little sad. And the reason I'm a little sad is because there's something I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss when you guys come up and ask for the blessing. I always thought it was so cool that you come up and you want a blessing. Even though you couldn't receive Holy Communion yet, you still wanted a blessing. You wanted Jesus to come to you in the way of a blessing. And I'm going to miss that. But I'm more excited that I get to give you guys Jesus in his body and life. That I get to say the body of Christ to each one of you. And I'm very excited about that. Very excited about that. But you know what? There's a challenge. I don't know if you just caught it. So I'm going to repeat it. That you have to start becoming more and more the Jesus that you're receiving. So for your brothers and sisters, if you have brothers and sisters, you have to say, this is me 
for you. You have to be willing to help them. You have to be willing to love them and care for them. To your moms and dads, your grandmas and grandpas, you have to say, this is me for you. How can I help you? How can I show you that I love you? For the kids at school, for the kids in your neighborhood, for the people you meet every day, you have to be willing to say, this is me for you. How can I love you? How can I help you? But it's not just for you guys, it's for all of us. And that's a tough job. A part of me wishes that today was the Feast of Pentecost. Because it says in the Pentecost story, there was a great rushing wind that went through the upper room. And right now, a great rushing wind would really cool this place down. <laughs> so instead of giving you more of my hot air, since we don't have a rushing wind, I'm going to stop. But I just want to say congratulations to all of our young people that are receiving the first Holy Communion. And for you to set the example that what you say and what you do will show people that you really believe it's Jesus who received it. This is me given for you. May we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father of Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious Bible. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and his Son is before and glorified, who has sold to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Let us now turn to God with faith, asking Him to satisfy all our needs. We pray this morning for our church, that nourished by Christ's body and blood, we may in turn work to nourish all our sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, that they work together to eliminate hunger and all the suffering that goes with it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community of faith, that our sharing in the Eucharist will nourish us for ministry among God's people in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parish members who bring Holy Communion to those who are ill and housebound, that they may know God's blessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our children who will be receiving the precious gift of the Eucharist for the first time today, that Jesus will come into their hearts in a special and loving way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, for those in hospitals, at home, and our residents in Seneca Butte, Ball's Home, and other nursing facilities. This morning, we especially ask your prayer for Gary Schmidt, Tim Day, Louis Vicchio, Bob Ormsby, Lori Hoxie, Bud Suits, and those whose names are listed in the bulletin on the prayer card and the intentions listed in the book of requests, that our love and prayers will bring them the healing peace of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. And now we pray for the faithful departed whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Anthony Turpolilli, Father Craig Albright, and Thomas Horn that they and all will share in the joy of the eternal ban banquet and for Fred DePew, for whom this Mass is offered.
For the intentions we, that we speak in our hearts, we now pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Father, satisfy the hunger of our hearts, the thirst of our souls. Grant all that we ask of you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The preparation of this is number 816, let us be prayer.
understand it. I pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace. Both signs are to be seen in mystery and the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race bounded by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song and adoration, as we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end now acclaim. <laughs> Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the 
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion this morning, I ask the kindness of allowing our first communicants to come forward and receive first. They've been instructed to come forward with their family around them, and then once we have finished giving them their first Holy Communion, we'll go back to our normal means of processing up center aisle, returning by side aisles. If there is anyone in church today who is not receiving Holy Communion, we invite you forward for blessing if you would like. When you come forward, just place your hands on your heart like this. Be signed for us to give you a blessing instead of Holy Communion.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity and then share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. expression of gratitude to all those who have been responsible for their formation and faith development, uh, especially uh, the catechists and our director of religious education. So our deep gratitude to all those wonderful people. We pray that you have a blessed and holy day. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thank you. Our recessional hymn is number 694. Now we remain.